we are going to have a discussion, but first I'd like to invite David Glasgow from, oh, I think he's out in the hall. Oh, here he comes. David Glasgow is here um, to represent the Metro Beautification and Environment Commission and the Metro Tree Advisory, and he's going to just come down and talk a little bit about the tree, so in case you have to, to slip out and take one with you. Um, David, can you come down and just tell people a little bit about the tree and how they can best take care of it? Very quickly, um, you know, this was a great piece to see before we get to hand out some trees, uh, because trees are not about the environment, they're about the people and our generation and the generations to come. Um, what we have today are bald cypress. Uh, they're very easy to plant, and we have, and they grow very well in this area. We have a little piece of information that also tells about planting and care. Uh, in a nutshell, these have really great roots. Uh, just plant it right up to the root, to the top of the roots, um, no deeper. Um, keep them watered about every other week. Um, if you can't plant it right away, uh, over the next couple of days, keep it in a cool place, not outside because you don't want it to freeze, um, but even in a refrigerator, if you happen to have one, you can have this in, is good, cool, dark, and uh, just dribble a little bit of water in every couple of days to make sure that the paper stays damp until it's ready to go in the ground. Be sure and pull the paper off and kind of let the roots stretch out because they're in a ball right now, uh, but these will actually be probably down to here. And when you're going in the ground, you can move them around. You don't have to do a really deep hole or anything. Um, they're very resilient and it's a beautiful tree. So um, I please help me thank um, Metro Public Works and the Beautification Commission for making these possible for us today. And also, what about care? How often do they need to be watered after they're planted? Did you already say that? Um, just especially for the first year, uh, keep them, if there's a dry spell, uh, it hasn't rained in several days, put a little bit of water on them, but because it's a relatively small tree, it's not going to need a ton. Just, um, you know, a, a few seconds with the hose is good, or uh, a little couple of cups of water to uh, keep the roots moist through the first summer. Um, and after that, they should, they should establish themselves and uh, be in good shape. And they'll grow, the first year they won't grow a lot, the second year they will grow a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it'll take off after that, and these are relatively quick growing trees as well. But uh, a particularly beautiful tree, it loses its needles in the winter, but it has beautiful bark to look at, and it has a nice pyramidal form. Um, if you, if you don't have room in a condo or in your, at your house, uh, consider giving them away as Christmas presents as well um, so that we can get them spread out around the city. Thank you all. Thanks so much. Really appreciate that. And um, Veronica Fraser from the um, Metro Beautification and Environment Commission will talk to us at the end of the event today just to make an announcement. I think that would be you or, or maybe it would just to talk about a, a special tree planting. Um, and so I'll introduce you to her later. But now I want to introduce you to our, um, one of our speakers. Um, Dr. Cliff Cockrum is here today um, from White's Creek High School. He is the chair of the science department at White's Creek High School, and he's the one who brought all these students with him today, and we're so glad to have him. Um, Dr. Cockrum is also co-leader of the Alternative Energy and Sustainability Program. Um, for Metro Schools, which is located at White's Creek High School in North Nashville. He's on the Mayor's Task Force for Green Jobs. He is the current Environmental Justice Chair of the Sierra Club of Middle Tennessee. And he was recently given a national award that goes to one teacher each year, and that is um, America's Polymer Science Educator of the Year Award, and that came from the American Chemical Society. And I want to say as an aside, he won $1,000 for this award, and he donated it to the Sierra Club for scholarships for students in Nashville. So we're very glad to have him here. Dr. Cockrum, um, can you come on up, and I'll give you a microphone, and you can introduce some students. Yeah. Thank you. I'm really humbled having seen this film. And rather than to sail up myself, I'd like to invite up a couple of students. Ann Holmes, one of the founders of the Sierra Student Coalition in Nashville, which brought together um, some 150 to 200 students in 10 different high schools in Metro Nashville. Uh, Ann Holmes, come on up. Um, Evan Taylor uh, from White's Creek High School, one of the leaders of the Sierra Student Coalition at White's Creek. Marcella Gomez from St. Cecilia's Academy, and Will Kaczynski, one of the uh, core leaders of the Sierra Student Coalition in Nashville, and also from USN. 
And what I'd like is for you guys to take a minute each and maybe say something about what you think the film meant to you. What was the, the thing that most struck you? And we'll also take some questions from the audience. Evan? When I was watching the film, I saw motivation and driven the things that we don't have that today in our community right now. A lot of people just aren't motivated to make differences or make changes to what they need to do like Pete and she was. But at the same time, I think we can also influence that in our teenage culture. Like I was talking about, she was playing trees. We've already playing trees on Sidewise Creek. We're just doing, we're making them one step at a time, taking them one step at a time. So with each step we make, we can influence more people and get more people involved. And we can, if we have them concerned enough, maybe we can bring back that motivation and thriving that we had back then and that they had there. Amen. Thank you. Thanks. And what was your reaction to the film? Well, uh, I mean, there are a lot of thoughts that I had while watching this film, but I guess the main thing that I was thinking throughout it was, you know, how many parallels there are between, you know, what was going on in Kenya and then what's going on in our country now, especially with all the political unrest and the bipartisanship and everything. So, I don't know, I, I just kept thinking about, you know, they're struggling, or they were, you know, struggling uh, to have equality in their government and how that kind of related to uh, environmentalism in their country and how that kind of is the same in ours. Uh, you know, we have so many, I guess, examples of, I, I mean, I hesitate to say it, but like corruption in our government where, you know, we have these politicians who are so for, you know, big oil and like the Keystone XL pipeline and different things like that. So, I know, I just kept thinking about all the crazy parallels, so that was my reaction. I hear you. Marcella from St. Cecilia's Academy, what did you think? Well, I really liked the end of the movie when she said that we must destroy fear and give hope to each other. I was definitely given hope that um, we can make a difference here. Even though we're not in a third world country, we still have issues with the environment here. And we could, as young people, and everyone in this room could definitely like make a difference in the community here in Nashville. That's right. I, I was very moved by the line towards the end that we the people must protect the environment. We can't just leave it to government and the government has proven it can't do it all by itself. Will? Hi, my name is Will Kotitsky. I go to the University School of Nashville, um, downtown over here. Well, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you to Nashville Public Television and the Nashville Public Library for hosting us. This event has been wonderful and it's really opened my eyes to a whole new world. Um, but as my three friends have alluded to, I think we're, we've come to such a point of urgency in our world today um, that we have to start working by multiplication. And so I, I hope that everyone will take home a tree and use that tree as a way to multiply the effects that um, Evan had a project that he was showing that, you know, I, I, I didn't get a big cha good, great chance to look at it, but that, you know, you can use trees to help repair the environment and take up chemicals and, and such, or you can use trees to help stop erosion, or you can use trees to shade buildings or parking lots or whatever. Um, meanwhile, the tree will always be taking carbon dioxide and air pollutants out of the atmosphere. So how can we use these trees that Nashville Public Works has been so kind to give us to multiply our effect and use it to the best of our abilities so that we can, the, it struck me that they planted 35 million trees in Kenya. And how can we get the most out of these 70 or so trees that we have here today? Thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to make a comment or respond or ask a question? We're wide open. And uh, I'm proud of all of you as students and as young people because so often we have so many kids who are out here doing some of the things when you talk about corruption and, and that type of deal, and we don't have enough. Well, we have a lot, but we don't have enough that are actually standing up and being vocal about the good things that are going on. So I commend you all, and I hope you keep up the good work. Thank you. Amen. I, I think who you are, what you do, what I hear you say, I think it's a miracle. And I'm really grateful for who you are and it gives me a reason to keep going every day. 
working in metro schools. Any other questions or comments? Hi. Um, also, thank you all for today, the workshops and the, the posters and the, and the film. Um, I, one of the issues that we have in our state right now is the removal of the mountaintops in East Tennessee, East Kentucky, West Virginia. Um, and once that's done, it's not coming back. And I was wondering if, if you all could comment on whether um, within your schools or within your friendship groups, people are aware of that and are thinking about what might be done about that. And I, may I just say, because before Anne speaks, she was on a panel that we did for a film last year called Deep Down that is about that very issue. So you're, you're the one to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, so I was just going to mention, uh, all of us were a part of a group called Sierra Scene, which was mentioned before the film, uh, which is Sierra Student Coalition Empowering Nashville Environmentalists. And uh, in that group, we're about to kind of uh, take on this campaign, I guess you could say, and we're really pushing for the, the Tennessee Scenic Vistas Act. And so we're going to be helping uh, our friend, what? Oh, so essentially, I don't know the exact number. Do you know the number of the height? Well, anyway, 2000? Anyway, so uh, the Scenic Vistas Act uh, is this act that we're pushing to be, uh, pushing to have passed in the, in the Tennessee government and essentially what it is is uh, this bill that says it will ban mountaintop removal above 2,000 right uh, above 2,000 feet and so essentially it's a uh, bill to help stop mountaintop removal it won't completely stop it altogether but it's one step closer to uh, making it less possible for people who do want to mine that coal and different things like that. So that is one thing that we're working on is trying to get that passed. And so we're working with other groups around the state like UT Knoxville and Middle Tennessee State University and other small groups like that to really urge. What? I was about to get to small groups like oh. UT Knoxville. Oh, right. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, but yeah, other groups like that to help get that passed. So I don't know. Well, and that the 2,000 feet, I'm not sure if it's 2,000 feet, but that that would essentially ban mountaintop removal in the state of Tennessee because that's where all the good coal is, is above whatever feet that is, feet number that is. But I think, to answer your question more specifically, I think there really is, among, at least among, in my school, there's a feeling that mountaintop removal is a bad thing, that fracking, hydraulic fracturing is a horrible thing, that we really are doing something that no one has ever done before to our environment, and we need to stop it. Um, I get that sense of urgency from my peers. Some of them could care less. Um, they're content driving their Mustangs. But there is a movement, and it will continue to grow. Um, and I'm honored to be a part of it. And I'm, I'm very glad. <laughs> Any que other questions or comments from the audience? Yes? I just want to comment on how proud I am of all of you young people, but um, I just have a special affinity with Will because I work at university school and he does put his money where his mouth is. He started our compost last year and actually came in my office when I bring scraps from home and to add to the compost and come and collect them. So you young people, you guys are the future and with you all making awareness to your peers and awareness to us as adults as to ways that we can make a difference. You guys are the ones that are going to be leading that after a while, and we're just very proud of you. Well, thank you, Ms. Stevens, and I look forward to your kitchen scraps in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or questions while I'm out here? Um, I might add that um, if there are educators in the audience today that um, Community Cinema and ITVS, we have free educators tools that you can use in the classroom. There are some modules around taking root. They have curriculum activities. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, I can, I can put those um, in your hands or your um, colleagues' hands. So anything else? Yes. I was just wondering if your group is outside of Nashville, you know, if you are in other areas of the state, if you might be at the college, looking at the college level too. Do you want to mention expanding. SSC and Sprague? Yeah, I'll try, so I'll try oh, to, there's, there's kind of a lot. Um, 
there, there's a high school group um, called the Tennessee Youth Environmental Network. Um, Tenyen.org is their website, T-E-N-N-Y-E-N.org. Um, it was founded by two girls in Maryville, Tennessee, in East Tennessee, right outside of Knoxville. Um, their mission, they're taking a gap year, and their mission is to connect high school environmental groups um, like us, what we've formed, uh, across the state. So we're working with them to help empower more students and really start pushing this movement in all of Tennessee. Um, so we're, we, we're, we like to say we're the Nashville or Davidson County chapter of this Tenyon. We are also part of Sierra Student Coalition, um, which is working nationwide to empower students just like us. And that's where we get the first part of our name is Sierra Student Coalition Empowering Nashville Environmentalists. Um, they're, they're also wonderful and they're working nationwide. Um, then the college level, we are also part of a group called TASC, which is the Tennessee Alumni and Students for Sustainable Campuses. Um, we are the only high schoolers in that group. Um, it is part of the larger Southeastern Energy Network. Um, <laughs> there's so many acronyms out there. Um, but we, we were trying to work with the college students to get their support um, because we're, a lot of times we're dealing with college issues on our campuses um, and having their support really helps us. I know maybe Mars can talk a little bit about the Green Fund later, but her and I, we're separately at our different schools, we're working to get this um, little extra fee attached onto tuition so students can um, decide on projects to help improve their campus and get energy creation and uh, energy efficiency on their campuses. Um, so the colleges have already done that. We've had, we have nine colleges across, nine colleges and universities across the state of Tennessee that have already done that. So they're helping us move forward. Um, the last thing that Dr. Cockerham alluded to was the, was SPROG, which is the Sierra Summer Programming. Um, and that, that takes high schoolers and college students and brings them together for an intensive nine or 10 or week. Eight day. Eight day training. Um, and you really, you're empowered and you have the skills to then go out and effectively organize to start grassroots campaigns, to start grassroots movements like Anne, when she came back from Sprague, she, um, Caitlin and Anne founded CRC. So, did I cover everything? Let me just add, the students that came back from the, it's a national youth leadership, uh, environmental leadership training program, within six weeks, they had gone from basically nothing for high school students in Nashville to an organization uh, that had, it was eight within six weeks, it's now 10 high schools and 150 to 200 kids involved. Uh, students, um, some, some right here, have had uh, scholarships to go to Washington to meet with legislators last spring. Uh, several recently went to the SSREC, the Southern... Uh, Southeast Student Renewable Energy Conference. Right. Um, they've been on panels. They've helped put together state workshops. They've really made a difference. And um, I would encourage you, uh, if, if you want to get involved in supporting students, to support sending more of our students to this summer program uh, because it, they come back doing the work of 100 adults. <laughs> Other questions, comments? Going once. <laughs> I would just like to say that the group of young people up here, I'm very proud of you in your path to, uh, in your path of helping humanity and helping us to understand our world around us and how we are affecting that. And what I find is in my years, as I grow older, I realize how little I know because there's so much to know. And I encourage you to continue learning, to continue to seek out information, to have an open mind about the things around you. And the one thing I was impressed about this film was the people who live near the earth, who grow and plant and survive day in and day out, interacting with the earth. These are the people that we can learn from. These are the people that we can listen and understand about the world around us. 
and we can all work together as a family, as a family of mankind, to continue to strive for a win-win situation for our planet, for us and the world around, around which we live. And you can make a change in this world. It takes time, it takes effort, but it can be done. I'll simply say this, it's like going down a mountain stream when, when you're going and you're trying to get from one point to another. You see ahead of you the rapids, some of the danger points. And so therefore, you start to maneuver the raft to a different location to get through that. That's the way life is. When you see things ahead of you, being observant, then you make the necessary plans that you need to get to the point where you need to go to. Thank you very much. Is now a good time to segue? Yes. I'd like to uh, tell you, we've, uh, I hope you saw the uh, environmental projects that were in the expo across the hall. There were 21 different projects. We'd like to present awards to seven students. And uh, one of the presenter for this uh, is Dr. Sherry Cummings, an associate dean from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. She's going to join me up here. She's also a member of the State Environmental Education Committee for the Sierra Club. Please join me in thanking her. And if you would just stand here. And the first one goes, uh, high honors presented to Evan Taylor for his work on issue analysis on phytoremediation in Middle Tennessee. And actually, if you could sort of shake hands in a way looking at the camera so that you'll have something to yeah, send home to mom. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'd like to call up Marcella Gomez for her service project and leadership at St. Cecilia Academy. Evan, by the way, is at White's Creek High School. Uh, uh, Marcella did work on the green fees and is receiving a leadership award from Middle Tennessee Sierra Club. <laughs> Will? And could I get also uh, headed up here, Will, uh, Ms. Drew, Ms. Cohen, and Mr. Jasper. Will is receiving an award. He has previously been honored for his work in leadership with the Sierra Club Student Coalition, but in particular, his project, which he uh, showed us today on erosion control as a service project in Middle Tennessee. Will? Ms. DeAndra Drew, also at Whites Creek High School, being awarded for her work by the State of Tennessee on Solid Waste Management Research Plan. Thank you, Ms. Drew from Whites Creek. Uh, Jessica Cohen from University School of Nashville for environmental leadership in her work in organizing the Sierra Student Coalition in Middle Tennessee. And finally, Trishawn Jasper. Mr. Jasper's project, uh, he was part of a group, and this is very interesting. Uh, they did a simulation in, and it's an award for engineering excellence. It was presented by Nissan and uh, Lipscomb University, uh, the best program boosting engineering, science, technology, and the Sierra Club. They created a robot that simulated the capture of uh, exotic invasive species to present, prevent ecosystem destruction. This is actually an important project that the USDA in Washington is working on now. And they just don't know that you're doing this work here. <laughs> Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I, I think. Um, I just, I, I love working with students. We love having leadership opportunities with community cinema. Dr. Cockrum is bringing students back in March when we show a film called Revenge of the Electric Car. If you ever saw Who Killed the Electric Car, this is the follow-up. We plan to do another eco fair and have more students um, because it won't be so close to vacation. Um, but I, I thank you so much, Dr. Cockrum, and all of you students for being here today. You're welcome, and thank you. Thank all of you. Um, and then um, I would like to introduce you to Veronica Frazier from Metro Beautification and Environment Commission. She has a few words. Yeah, you can take that microphone. Thank you, mm -hmm. Thank you Allison. Uh, Metro Beautification and Environment Commission, I'm the director, which is a division of public works, so that's why you've heard your public works 
department mentioned here. Allison called me a few weeks ago and asked us to be a part of this program, and we uh, wanted to, certainly wanted to right off the bat and brought trees to give away, but I feel like right now I got the biggest gift of all to participate in this. It's been wonderful, and uh, the young students, uh, you all make me feel like I can grow old peacefully because the world's in good hands, and I thank you for that. We are also donating a tree, a memorial tree in memory of Margera Matai to be planted at White's Creek. It will be a three inch caliber, a big uh, uh, cypress, uh, like the seedlings here. And hopefully we'll have a ceremony sometime in January at, at your, whenever you decide when it's convenient and we'll do all we can to support you. And you young students, I hope to hear from you if there's anything that Metro Beautification and Environment Commission can do to support your efforts or the Metro Tree Advisory please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you all. This has been a real treat for us. Thank you so much. And um, just one announcement before we go. We're going to give away um, a door prize, as we often do. But I wanted to mention to you the January film, since we didn't have a preview today. It's, it's going to be another great event with a lot of youth here. It's a film called Daisy Bates, First Lady of Little Rock. And it's about Daisy Bates, who um, was the mentor to the Little Rock Nine and um, during um, integration in Little Rock, Arkansas. So um, this film is about Daisy's life. She was, um, it, she was a bold woman, a little bit controversial. We're going to use the event to celebrate mentors in Nashville, and so we'll have um, several mentoring organizations here, but we'll also have mentors and their mentees on the panel, and I think it's going to be a good one. So please come to that one. It's January 14th. We've got postcards out in the lobby, so grab a couple on your way out. And also, join us on Facebook, please, so you can hear about our events. It's Community Cinema Nashville. Um, so please join us. We, we want to see these crowds build up in the new season. So thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Metro Beautification and Environment Commission. Thanks, Whites Creek High School, Cliff Cockrum, and Sierra Scene Students and Sierra Club, and uh, Nashville Public Library, Nashville Public Television, thank Nashville you, Film ITVS. Festival. Thanks, ITVS. Yeah. <laughs> um, see you next time. Happy holidays.